Get it. Oh, Kathy, you know, it'd probably be better if you don't mind holding on to it and putting it in the plate when it's passed. Okay. Could you do that for me? I'm afraid I'll stick it in my pocket and forget to put it in the plate. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. And as always, we have so much to rejoice and be glad in that we get to have worship together on this Sunday morning and that we're glad to have those of you that are here in person as well as those that are joining us online on Facebook Live right now as well as those that are watching the recordings later on Facebook, YouTube, and on Epworth Channel 6. And as always, thank you to Epworth for broadcasting our service uh, for free. So thank you for them. But we're really glad you all are joining us as well. I already saw that some of you are logging in and had said good morning to you all. So say good morning to everybody else. And I know we have lots to go on. And Chris, you look more handsome now than you ever did. Oh! I hope Chris Whitlock is one that's watching. <laughs> Conrad, thank you for filling in for Chris. I'm going to turn it over to you. Yeah. Thank you, Mike. Oh, wait a minute. We do that. Do what? We need to do happy birthday. You ready? We got it. It's 
I almost oh, forgot. I have first. it written here. Happy birthday. Big thing circled oh, in the and star, I and I almost forgot it because it's the seventh day of the month. And so to me, I think we're well into April, but we need to sing happy birthday to our April babies. And two of them are right up here on this area because Jan and Crystal both have birthdays, and they're always the one leading or playing. So we want to sing happy birthday to you all, too. Stand up, Danielle. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Christmas. Happy birthday to you. Woo! Happy birthday, April babies. Now, Conrad, I turn it over to you. Thank you, Michael. Oh, announcements and joys. Let's look at the back of your bulletin, see what's going on this week. Uh, there is a special called board meeting immediately following worship. Is that still on, Michael? Do what? Special called board meeting. Yeah, it's today. Okay. There it is, right, right there the in your bulletin. And it's going to take how long? About five seconds. Did you hear that? He promised. And I have a watch that runs a timer, you know, a stopwatch. So we'll see how that works. Then on Wednesday, we have Stitches of Love, Bible Study, the youth. Do we have food for the youth? We do. We do. We're under control there. And then at 7 o'clock Wednesday evening, our beautiful, wonderful choir practices and presents us with such a blessing every week. On Thursday at 1.30, the Disciples Women are meeting. And where is that going to be? Right here? At Janice's house. Oh, at Janice's house. Be there or be square. Okay. And uh, speaking of the women of the church, one joy, uh, if I may share, that Martha was telling me about. Do you know that the women of the church, some of them, got together and they baked 45 dozen. Let me say that again. 45 dozen. I think I'd be tired standing after all of that cookies for the uh, Cairo prison ministry so thank you ladies whoever all was involved in that let's give them a round of applause that's a big task and that was a wonderful thing for them to do uh, let me see I believe that pretty much has it all covered unless somebody else has some announcements they need to I make. have some joys then let's hear them. Okay, great. Well, one joy is that our oldest, Nolan, uh, got married yesterday to Kylie. And so we welcome Kylie into our family. And that's why Darla and I are kind of really tired because everyone wants these weddings at nighttime now. So, <laughs> but we're excited to add Kylie to our family. And the other joy I have is that, because I don't know if you should say it or not, but Judy Dupre was inducted into the Educators Hall of Fame this last, what, Thursday? Yeah. Friday, Friday, Friday evening. Night. What a great honor. They don't do that for just anybody. So congratulations. Are there any other joys or announcements? If not, let's pass the peace.
54. <gasps> Yay, we're good. Yeah, we're good, except for the license numbers in the wrong place. to see everybody here this Sunday after Easter, and we are going to start worship this morning with hymn 229, that Easter day was joy, uh, with with joy was bright. Man, I'm having <laughs> a long a hard time. title. Yeah. Verses 1, 2, and 4. Please remain standing and join me in responsively reading our call to worship that's printed in your bulletin. In steadfast love and faithfulness, God has done marvelous things. God raised Jesus from the dead. Christ is alive and at work among us. God calls us into partnership with Christ Jesus and bids us to walk in the light. How good and pleasant it is when brothers and sisters dwell in unity. Will you join me in prayer? O oh God, fill us up, instill within us a right spirit. Help us to know the needs of those in our community that are hurting. Help us to be a beacon of light to all. And Lord, just we ask your blessing on this service on the meditations of our hearts, on the words that are spoken, the songs that are sung. May they all be pleasing to glorify you. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated, and while you're finding your seat, I invite you to find in your bulletin the list of the concerns that we're going to pair with our joys. And as always, I invite you to continue to pray for those that are going through ongoing uh, medical situations. Some of those are cancer. Most of them are life-threatening. Um, a few updates. 
that we need to have is that uh, Sue Carter, which is Rita Bush's good friend that we've been praying for who had suffered a stroke, she passed away this week. So we're praying for Sue Carter's family uh, and, and uh, the rest of the people that are around her that her passing has affected. Um, I tried to reach out to John Rockstead to see how he was doing and, and all I got was a voicemail, which means he hopefully he's resting and recovering from his surgery. And uh, as I had mentioned by text out to the group, we're praying for Maxine Dyer, who has been on hospice for a while, but then Gina, her daughter, called me yesterday <clears throat> and said that it had been four days as of yesterday that uh, she hadn't eaten anything and, um, and she was not aware of who Gina was. So we need to keep Maxine and the family in our prayers. Are there any other additions or updates? Oh, yeah. A week from Friday, thank you. Just in case for those of you who are especially online uh, may not be able to hear, uh, Anita, which is Sarah's cousin um, that we've been praying for at stage four cancer, uh, is not an eligible candidate for chemo at this time. So we're praying that her platelets get elevated so she can get, receive chemo. And Perry, Sarah's grandson, who's had uh, ear reconstruction surgery, is going for another round a week from Friday. So we're praying for Perry as well. Thank you. Laura Dehart, who we prayed for a couple weeks ago, had a procedure to remove fluid from her lung, is now having fluid uh, ret returning to her lung, so that she may have another procedure to get rid of that fluid. So we're praying for Laura and the family. Thank you. Any others? Okay. We know that those of you who are watching from home, we cannot hear your concerns, but we know God can. So speak them out loud as we go before our Lord in this time of prayer. O oh God of all of our beginnings, may this day and every day begin with our praise to you, O oh God. Let every breath become a witness to your spirit dwelling within and among us. Open up our hearts to receive your saving gifts. Loosen our tongues to proclaim your unsurpassed greatness. God, we ask that the may the noise of our celebration help your people to sense your powerful presence and claim the joys of speaking about you through the whole world, even to those that hide behind locked doors. May your message reach them. Speak to us your word of peace, that our inner turmoil may be settled down, our eyes may be open, our ears alert to make faithful response to your love. And God, may always our witness be authentic, that the world may come to know your glory and respond with joyous obedience to your word. For God, we know that our lists of concerns that we add to our joys are people who are very dear to us. They are your children. We ask that you hear our prayers as we have spoken their names out loud as well as those that remain within our hearts, hear our prayers. As we spoke of the times of concern as well as the celebrations of joys, be with us and all parts of our lives. And may we not lock our doors to any part of your love. But may we open up, swing the doors open wide, and receive you anew and fresh today. For this we bring before you, in and through the name of our Lord and Savior, your Son, the risen Christ. In Jesus' name we pray.
make their way to the back of the sanctuary as we prepare to receive our offering this morning. As I mentioned, um, our oldest got married uh, last night and they had rented a venue uh, over um, by uh, in Newcastle area. So uh, we all had to go over and Darla and I got there at noon and the wedding didn't start till six. And I kept thinking in my mind, boy, it's going to be a boring afternoon because I'm like, what are we going to be doing? My goodness gracious, we had to set tables up. We had to set chairs up and uh, we had bought tablecloths to put on all those and there were centerpieces and then we had uh, plate settings with the napkins and the forks and the knives and all that. And, uh, and Darla's been working on this wedding now for months, collecting these things and it's all was coming together. And I thought, my gosh, there's a lot for us to be doing. The neat part was that as people showed up, you know, the wedding party stuff, they jumped in and how can I help? And so we had everybody helping and next thing you know, we had everything set up and ready to go. And then guess what happens after you do all that? You have to put it back away. <laughs> and I kept thinking, well, it's 10 o'clock. We have to be out by 11. Maybe we should start tearing some of the tables down that aren't being used yet. Because I thought, Darla and I are going to have to do all this. But everybody jumped in. And, and as, the, um, as it started winding down, people were helping us put the tables away and putting the chairs back away and getting all this stuff together. And we had bags and bags and bags of garbage. Uh, and so the, uh, the walker, our second oldest, threw all those in a, th in a little uh, golf cart thing and took it over. Everybody was helping. The task can be daunting when you think you have to do it all by yourself. You know, God asked us to reach out to the world in many different ways. We can't do that as a church if we don't give of ourselves out of what God's given to us. And the task can be overwhelming. But when we work together, when we pair with other churches and we pair with other organizations and we get out there and get God's word out there, the task isn't so bad. But in fact, it's pretty rewarding. Think of these things and others as the plates are passed.
we are thankful that you have given us yet another opportunity to give back from that which you've already blessed us with so that we can make a difference in this world for your glory in Christ's name. Amen. You may be seated.
If you're able, please stand for the reading of our scripture. <coughs> Today's reading comes from the book of John, the, the gospel of John, I should say, <coughs> chapter 20, verses 19 through 31. Hear the words. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. Oops, I think I missed a page. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger in the mark of the nails, and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book, but these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name, the word of God for the people of God. You know, Easter was just last Sunday. Gosh, it feels to me like it's been more than a week since last Sunday. And I think part of that is, is because we've been put a lot of work leading up to Easter, all through Lent, which started way back on February 14th with Ash Wednesday, and all the weeks and all the things that we did leading up to, to hearing the story of Easter last week. With great joy, we celebrated that Jesus rose from the dead, that the women found the tomb was empty, except for the young man who was dressed in white. Uh, and, and eventually, the news spread around the world and the community that Jesus had raised from the dead, that he was no longer dead, but he was alive forevermore. All this was happening at the same time, great fear was brewing and growing among the disciples. The belief in the news needed time for it to grow and to nurture it to what we have today. They needed time for that to grow. I mean, for us on this side of the resurrection, it's easy for to us to accept the fact that the tomb was empty and that Jesus rose from the dead. But for them, reality was still very strong. Jesus made the wrong people upset, and it cost him his life. Why didn't he just... Uh, why did he keep pushing them? Uh, why didn't he just go along with the authorities of the time? It worked for generations of Jews before. Just keep your head down, go with the flow, and everything will be okay. But he didn't do that. He just kept. He kept, and instead, he kept telling them that he was the Messiah. And now he was dead, and he was gone. And running full speed through their minds 
was the thought, what if we're next? Fear is a very powerful thing. I, I remember when I was a kid, I was scared to death of this six foot tall talking bear that made its way to my commercials on my TV. His name was Smokey. Remember him? And, and he was very tall in stature. And this deep, bombing, a booming voice looked at me straight in the eye through the TV screen and said, only you can prevent forest fires. I thought, oh my gosh, that's a lot of responsibility for a kid. But his message, although it was scary, was very powerful because they also showed some kids that were helping out the family, getting buckets of water and pouring them on the campfire and stirring them with a shovel. And the message was very important about stopping forest fires because all it would take was one glowing ember to start another fire going. And so you needed to pit that out. In the, in the mindset of the Jewish leaders, maybe they had the same philosophy We've got to get rid of every ember of those that follow Jesus' teaching, which included the disciples. They were going to get eradicated. Their fear was very real and very legitimate. For their reality said opposed to stories that they heard that Jesus had raised from the dead. Reality made way more sense. Their fear made more sense to them that day. And going with the idea that it's always safer in numbers, they gathered together in the upper room and they found safety behind a locked door. They put their trust and their faith in some wood and a locking mechanism. It's funny though, we do the same thing. We assign a, a, a lot of our trust and our safety to the devices that we have. Uh, I remember when I was a kid, uh, probably my early teens, my oldest brother came home uh, unexpectedly. It was, it was a hot summer day, and none of us were home, and he didn't have a key to the house for some reason. And so he tried all the doors. He sat on the back patio for a while, and he thought, gosh, I I'm hot, and I could just go in the house. And so he looked over in, at my mom's house at the time. Um, she had a big picture window right next to the back door. And that picture window was made up of a lot of little squares just like our sanctuary windows. And so he decided it wouldn't cost that much to get a new little pane of glass. So he just got a, a, a rock or something. And he broke one little pane and reached in and unlocked the door. And then he did uh, ultimately replace that one pane of glass. But from that point forward... In my mind, those doors being locked didn't do so good anymore. I mean, anybody can break into a house if they wanted to bad enough. And so I no longer assigned so much trust to those locked doors. But those disciples, they gathered behind this locked door, put all their trust there that nobody was going to break in. They, 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 they didn't gather because they were trying to keep Jesus out. They were trying to keep out people that wished to do them harm. But in turn, by doing so, they did keep Jesus out. In our attempt to protect ourselves, sometimes we shut out the very people that want to help us. Just like one night in the backyard, rain was just coming down as hard as it can. I could see the clouds began to rotate and the sirens were going off. I already had Seth and Lily down in the storm cellar, but we had two dogs at the time. And I was <clears throat> trying to get them to come toward me so I could pick them up and take them down the storm cellar. And I kept calling to them and they kept running away from me. And so I'd run after a little bit more. and I was like, I'm trying to help you guys stop running away from me. In their mindset, in their anxieties, the disciples, every time that Jesus went out to them with the tornado signs blowing, and they kept running away from him. He was trying to reach out to them, so he did. Right through a locked door, he reached out to them. And when he stood before them, he said to them, Peace be with you. Out of all the things that Jesus could have said that day, he would have been justified. He could have said, Well, what were you all thinking? You know, you're all just being crazy. What happened to you guys? When I needed you the most, you all scurried and ran away. I left for just a little bit and everything falls apart. Have you not heard anything that I've been teaching you the last three years? But Jesus didn't say any of those things. He just simply looked at him and said, peace be to you. They had created in their mind a world that wants to get out there and get them and hurt them and destroy them. Anything but peace was going through their minds that day. Words of peace and assurance is what they needed, though. At times when we have uh, our faith tested, like when, like when a loved one is in pain or dies or is hurting, peace be with you. 
When, when our whole world is crashing down around us, we hear the words of peace be with you. When we put all of our faith and trust and our understanding of God and, and it falls apart, Jesus doesn't come and, and, and give us condemnation. He comes and tells us, peace be with you. He appeared to them in the most unpeaceful time in their lives. We have times like that. Matter of fact, last Wednesday in youth group, we talked about how to cope during times like that. The curriculum had, had a, a, a story about a teenage girl who was going through a whole lot of, of mess in her life, uh, her personal life, and everything was falling apart. And, and so the lesson was, how should she cope with that? Because a lot of people will turn to drinking or drugs, which does deal with it for a little bit of time, but it always comes back and it comes back even stronger. But we learned in that lesson that those who successfully deal with such times and situations do so with the help of the church, with the help of praying, with the help of leaning upon God. Surrounding yourself with spirituality, you hear the words of Jesus, and in the most difficult times, you hear those words of peace be with you. When life gets tough, we do want words of comfort. In some of my toughest times in life, I found great comfort in the voice of my parents. In the times of my deepest and darkest moments, I found comfort in the voice of the church that surrounded me with love and comfort. Peace Jesus brings to us as if it's a gift. But what have I always said, church, when God gives us a gift? It's never intended just for our joy that we need to share the gifts that God gives to us. And that became evident in Jesus' next words, which is, as God sent me, even I so send you. I send you out into the world to carry peace as well as receive that peace. It is a gift for you, but I want you to share that peace with the world. Sometimes it's just with a smile at the right time or a hug that is needed. We all agree that when we are facing difficult times, we do so with the help of God. And what a blessing it is that Jesus brings us that peace into our lives. But today's message is all about God who finds, he finds us in the times of the darkest, even when we lock ourselves behind our doors. We're called, church, to find the peace of Jesus by coming out from behind our locked doors. And as soon as we come out behind our locked doors, Jesus tells us, now go find the others that are behind their locked doors and bring my peace into their world. We are to bring Jesus through closed doors as well as walls that have been built up. We are to walk into their lives and share the good news even when they say they don't want to hear it. We need to walk into their lives even <clears throat> if it's not even saying a word, but showing them God's love through care and compassion. We need to walk into their lives even when their doors are locked. We call out to people, and just like my dogs that night, they want to run away from us. Well, church, go get them. Don't give up. Don't let a little thing like a locked door get in your way. Because we have a great gift to share with them. Because you see, Jesus isn't done breaking through locked doors on that day. He just got started. He just uses us as the key to unlock those doors. Jesus gave them a message of peace. He still does. He just uses our voice. Jesus gives them messages of hope still. He just uses our arms to embrace the world. In the darkest of times, peace awaits them, but it gets nowhere if we're not willing to break through those locked doors. Because you see, many times people have a great deal of trust in their own protection. The walls they put up, the doors they lock, the windows they shut. It only took just a little bit of effort for my brother to shatter that, that glass but as the shards of glass fell to the ground, the voice of Jesus can reach to everyone. So they can hear, too, the same message that we receive today. No matter what goes on in this world, I bring you peace. Peace unto you. Amen. Amen. Amen.
45 dozen cookies. That is a lot of cookies. Matter of fact, uh, some of them were cooked right here in our church kitchen because uh, I could smell it from my office. <laughs> and I was like, oh, Tim Taylor, get away from me. <laughs> and, and then I had great news because some of the cookies got rejected. <laughs> and so they left them for the youth group. So even the rejected cookies were good. 45 dozen cookies. <laughs> the important part also is what were those cookies for? Because that means at least from our, our part that our women of the church played, 45, and they, they weren't all in this kitchen. I, I think Marty told me, and, and I think Carolyn told me, some were cooked in other people's kitchen but brought together. That means at least 45 prisoners got a dozen cookies. Now, we eat cookies all the time, don't we? I mean, wow, that's not such a big deal. But that little bit of, uh, uh, that, of cookie is a little bit of love to people who feel as if they're not loved at all. As if, as if the world has turned their back on them. Because of whatever it was they did, they feel as if they have to wear a scarlet letter of whatever it is as they go out in the world. But at least 45 of them have a little bit of love from the ladies who decided to put the ingredients together and cook them and send them their way. The world needs to know about God's love. Whether it's a cookie or to come up and have a little piece of bread and a little bit of juice, it's our encounter with our Lord and Savior, and all are invited to partake. As we prepare to receive our Holy Communion, I'm going to turn the service over to Crystal as I try to get the screen down. Let's sing together hymn 392, Draw Us in the Spirit's Tether. On the night when our Lord and Savior was gathered with the disciples at that first last supper, he took the bread from the table, he lifted toward heaven to give thanks. But this time he took the bread and he said, this is no longer ordinary bread, for this is my body that I give unto you, eat of it in remembrance of me. In a like manner, he poured out some wine. And as he did, he said, this is no longer ordinary wine, for this is my life-giving blood that I pour out freely for you so that you can understand what true forgiveness is all about, so that we can be in covenant, a covenant that's based on love. He said, drink of this in remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of the bread and we drink of the cup, 
we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes again. Let us pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this beautiful day and that we are alive to enjoy it. Thank you for Jesus being raised from the dead. It is the resurrection that makes us Christians. We must listen to you and to Jesus as you teach us the lessons we need to know. Give us understanding and peace. Our dear Heavenly Father, we gather around this table because we know that whatever our lives have given us, these lives of ours may be made whole. We may be forgiven of our sins because our Lord and Savior told us that by his dying and being raised from the dead that we might have eternal life with him. Help us, God, to put all our cares and our troubles behind us as we partake of this cup. Help us to have that feeling of peace be with you as we partake. And we ask, dear God, that all these things might be brought to you. Amen. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
Let us pray. Most gracious and wonderful, beautiful God who created this wonderful day for us, as well as created the invitation that you extend to us to come to the table of remembrance, the table of fellowship, of uniting us to becoming one body of Christ. But God, we know that as we receive the invitation that some of our church members are physically unable to come and to join us, bless our agape ministry as they extend the table of remembrance and fellowship to our homebound. So that way, God, we may all break of bread and drink of cup, that we may all reflect and remember your love that came in the form of our Lord and Savior, who came into this world just like we do, who grew up and taught us, who showed us how to love, to teach us the way home. The least we can do is to remember the prayer that he taught us so long ago. So as we blend our voices together, may your ears find it pleasing as we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us of our sins, as we forgive those who have sinned against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. What a wonderful morning of worship it has been yet again. I'm so glad that everybody came. Glad that you all online joined us. Uh, glad to have you as a part as well. Don't forget now, um, Disciple Women's Fellowship will be meeting this Thursday at Janice uh, uh, Blassingame's house. At 1.30. Thank you for that. Um, don't forget, board members, if you could just stay uh, here in the sanctuary, uh, and then Mark will call us to order quickly, and we only have one item to vote on, so I don't, now five seconds might be a little stretch, but <laughs> depends on how quickly someone makes a motion, <clears throat> Conrad. So, uh, but also don't forget, though, uh, another special event's coming up, April 20th at Stroud's First Christian Church will be the Regional Assembly on Land. Now, the Regional Assembly on Sea will be later in the summer, but this one uh, will just be worship and business meeting. And this is when um, I pass baton off as, because um, I'm currently the Regional Moderator, I get to turn the baton over to the next Regional Moderator. And then I can take a deep breath. So, got through uh, all the celebrations of the first part of this year. And uh, gosh, it is a joy uh, of the, the talent that we have from our staff. I always like to mention that, but uh, Jan's offertory piece, my goodness gracious, that was beautiful. Thank you for sharing with us. That was gorgeous. And what a joy that they would both have birthdays in April. That's just so cool. We have April babies up there. So. And Danielle's got an April birthday. April 29th. And how old will you be? 54. 54. Woo! That's amazing, Conrad, because you look like you're 30. So, and thank you for stepping in today. I only look like I'm 30. Yeah, you look like you're 30. <laughs> now, we can all respond <laughs> to today's worship. Uh, now, for some people, their response is to come forward and place their membership into this congregation by transfer from another and make public their confession of faith for the first time. Um, if that's how you're called to respond, then as we start to sing our closing song, just come on down. I'll be here to receive you. Um, those of you that are watching online, it's a little bit harder to come down the aisle, but you just reach out to me, let me know, and we can um, uh, uh, receive you uh, digitally. So we can make that happen too. Just let me know that's your intent. But everybody who's here can respond by singing as joyfully as we can our closing song, which I'm going to turn over to Crystal, which is Trust and Obey. Let's stand and sing hymn 556, Trust and Obey, verses 1, 2, and 4. <laughs>
Sorry about that. I <laughs> got a little distracted. Um, everybody grab your hymnals because I've got words I want to put in your mouth. <laughs> Hymn number 341. 341. Because with great joy, we get to welcome Judy Parrish uh, to become part of the member of uh, the First Christian Church of Chickasha. Judy's been visiting for quite a while, and she has uh, let me know that she would like to transfer her membership uh, to be part of this church. And she has a background in disciples. Uh, she grew up disciples. So welcome back home. Glad to have you at the First Christian Church of Surreal. Oh, good, good. So, I just have one question to ask you. Do you reaffirm your faith that Jesus is the Christ, the Son, living God, and proclaim Him as your Lord and Savior? Then I extend to you the right hand of fellowship, unless you're left-handed. <laughs> Sorry, Larry. And they all have something that they would like to say to welcome you as part of the members. Let us share together. Reaffirming our own faith in Jesus the Christ, we gladly welcome you into this community of faith and enfolding you with our love and committing ourselves to your care. In the power of God's Spirit, let us mutually encourage each other to trust God and to strengthen one another to serve others, that Christ's church may in all things stand faithful. Welcome, welcome, Judy. Which, which verse? Do you trust the reverence, like the last slide? That one? Uh, the there we go. Let's see together whatever Crystal tells us to sing.